All right, one of the great things about slingshots is that they're nearly infinitely customizable. And if you're a do-it-yourselfer, slingshots are just fantastic, um, fantastically fun. So one thing that I find most rewarding about the slingshot sport, and a lot of other serious slingshot shooters do as well, is figuring out exactly what bands work best for their style of shooting and their application. And one of the best ways to figure that out is to make your own. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make your own bands. All right, all you need is obviously some quality latex or TheraBand or whatever material you might want to use, whether it be Linotex or an exercise band. They all have their merits. Today we're using 40 thousandths thick medical latex. You need a rotary cutter. Now you can get these at most um, craft stores, uh, Walmart, places like that. This one's made by Fiskars. Another couple of companies are Ulfa. Um, the cutting mat, which is a self-healing cutting mat, this is critical. Don't try to do this on a cutting board. It just doesn't work. You need the self-healing cutting mat. It really makes the roller cutter work um, way better. All right, and finally, you need a way to mark it out. So you can either use a ruler or you can make some jigs. So I'm going to show you both. So what I've got here is a jig that's just a taper that I like to use. It's the length of the band as well as the actual taper. I'm going to show you that first. All right, so for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and quickly measure out the length of my band here and just make a mark here and here. Then I'm going to trim up my rubber. Got my line there. Got my roller cutter. All right. Now I've got it the length of the, the band taper jig. I'm going to simply line up the edge, press down, press down firmly, and cut along the opposite edge. And what you're left with is one perfect taper. So we'll do that one more time. Now when I'm using a taper, I'll often turn it around and alternate. You get a little bit more rubber out of your sheet that way. So take your time, make sure everything's lined up. You want these bands to match as closely as possible. And that's one of the reasons that we make die cut bands here at Simple Shot, is that they're absolutely the same from band to band. There can be some variation here, but often it's not enough to notice. Okay, and now we have two pieces of rubber that are ready to be tied onto a pouch. So what if you don't have the taper? Well, easy enough. This just requires a steady hand and a steady eye and a good measuring stick. So let's assume that we want to make this next piece uh, tapering from one inch to three quarters of an inch. So I'm simply going to come to one end and make a mark at one inch. And then at the opposite end, I'll measure out three quarters. Then take a straight edge and match those up. Firmly hold down on the straight edge. And there is a band tapered from one inch to three quarters of an inch over nine inches. So this will be a nice, really powerful band. Um, and you'd make another one. So that's about as simple as it gets. There are a couple of other ways to cut bands. The rotary cutter is by far the easiest. You can do it with a sharp pair of scissors, but the problem there is that when you finish a cut and start into the next one, you can create a nick, which will cause the band to fail early. And finally, if you have a sharp guillotine paper cutter, those work really well as well. A quality guillotine paper cutter is key though. Make sure it's sharp. Other than that, go pick up a simple rotary cutter, a self-healing cutting mat, and you're on your way to making all the band sets you ever care to shoot. Thanks for taking a look.